Hey everyone, Steve here with Class A Surfacing. So um, I'm going to carry on about uh, NURBS, Bezier, that type of stuff for a bit. And you can see I have a spline. And if I double click on the spline, you can see I have the history. It's a bipoles. It's a third degree. It is a NURBS spline, not a Bezier because I don't have a single segment turned on, I know. Um, and select OK just to show you. And you can see this is the control polygon. These are the knot points that we have on that spline. So I'm just going to take this and copy and paste to make an identical version of said spline. Now I'm going to go in and under the curve tool here there is a old tool under edit curve called divide curve and it's going to remove the creation parameters from the spline that I have selected select OK and I want to divide this at knot points at all knot points right there's different methods equal segments bounding objects so on and so forth but here I want this to be divided in the knot points of said spline now I'm gonna select OK and as I do that you'll see that the other spline disappears because it warned me it's removing parameters which is fine so now I'm just gonna go ahead and hide this there's my spline or should I say splines you can see that I have at every segment a spline okay so now if I come in here go to my analysis I'm gonna pick these segments you'll notice that none of them have any knots because I separated the spline up at all those or divided the spline up at all those knots but if I go to show poles you'll see something magical happen now these poles right once the spline is no longer a multi-segment spline every knot point becomes an endpoint because every knot point becomes an endpoint a control point has to go there okay so a control point always has to exist at every end point of a spline so that control point as you can see remember the initial spline that I copied if I look at this cat is a third degree spline which means every segment technically has a cubic math imparted in it. If it was a fourth degree, fifth degree, whatever, then each segment in theory would have that math imparted on it. Now as I look at this, I said in theory, now as I look at this you'll notice that um, this is a third degree, so each segment is a third degree segment. I get to that control point. You'll notice across that control point here I have uh, these other control points. They share, as you can see, a common slope right remember across that knot point as a standard spline rather than three separate splines this just came out and came out you can see these over here share a common slope as well the big difference is when I did the split divided it the division took and imposed a new control point here and gave these a common slope across that control point okay so that's telling me that at a minimum those are uh, tangent across that control point okay so if I come in now and I go information and I go spline and I pick this spline whoop, all right, hold on here pick this spline there we go select OK you know, what you'll see is it tells you it's a polynomial number of knots two and this is the big one C2 knots so across those boundaries I had curvature continuity a mathematical because it's a C continuity not a G a mathematical um, continuity across those knot points so if I were to match these curvature let me refresh if I were to match these curvature across that point this is what the control polygon would look like so maintain curvature across that boundary as well okay so when you get into multi section or multi segment splines um, this is basically what's going on each segment has its own bit of math and each bit of math tends to be right it's it's you know it's compounding it's going to be heavy if i have a third degree NURBS spline then each segment has that math imparted on it so that's why part of the reason it's important to use a Bezier spline when you're doing at least minimally your primaries 
Um, even your secondaries, tertiaries and things of that nature, when you get into CAD systems like NX and CATIA, they use NURBS, then it's going to give you what, you want, what uh, it wants to give you. There are some controls, of course, um, ISOM, uh, ISOM Classic, you know, they have uh, really good controls. Everything comes up Bezier. So rather than having a multi-span uh, surface, it'll be all single-span surfaces that just have an actual boundary that's exposed. Okay, so there's a difference in the way it does the math calculation a little bit. Um, but uh, for the most part, you end up with the same results. Now, if I just, uh, let me go ahead and do this, hide everything, and show this cat. If I double click on it, go back in, you'll notice that if I do one, move one of these, you'll see all of the movement that occurs basically happens on this segment. If I move this guy, you'll notice that it affects this segment because now this technically affects this boundary, but it stops, right? It doesn't go beyond that. So um, again, this is almost mimicking like I have three separate splines and across those three separate splines, those two boundaries, this is what happens if I were to impart curvature, you know, tangency G0, G1, G2, or C0, C1, C2 across those boundaries. So as you can see, um, again, it gives me more localized control over that spline in that area. Now, if I were to, uh, let's do this. I just reversed the blank. If I double click on one of these and I go and modify this, you'll notice it doesn't do anything with the rest of those splines. It just because there's technically three different segments. And because of that, I would have to go back in and impose tangency, curvature, whatever, at that endpoint to get things to match up. Now, um, typically speaking, like I said, you want all of your primaries, your big slab surfaces, everything to be as simple as possible. So this would probably be something, not probably, this is something that you definitely would want to use. But anyway, that's um, that's kind of what a knot point is. It's almost, it's basically defining the segments on the spline. And so as you can see, this spine had three segments. Each segment has its own math, but when it's joined together as a single NURBS spline, the controls that you have are going to be slightly different than if I have three separate individual splines. So it's understanding how to work with all of these things that uh, gives you the capability to make really good, high-quality Class A surfaces, and then also the blends and how everything kind of comes together. So. I'll be doing more, but uh, next several lectures, I'm going to be talking about how this affects surfaces as well. So uh, when we get into surfaces, multi-patch surfaces, multi-span, um, you'll see what's going on and why, again, it's important to minimize the amount of math on all of your initial input geometry to keep this kind of stuff as simple as possible downstream. Anyway, hope you learned something. If you did, like the video, uh, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks.